Good morning. Today we're going to go over some billboard shaders where you can see all these amazing effects that we're achieving in uh, shader graph. Pretty cool stuff. And uh, let's get started. I'm going to make a timestamp for each different um, shader. We have four here, so the one, two, three, and four, you should have the timestamps down below. Okay, so first we're going to go over the. Uh, the variation zero, which is pretty much the most basic shader you could, or billboard shader you could hope to find in uh, Shader Graph. We basically figure out the camera's Z, X, and Y directions, or X, Y, and Z if you prefer that. Um, and then we multiply the vertex's position data by those directions. So we're going to move each vertex, um, whatever our X is in that X direction, whatever our Y is in that Y direction, and whatever our Z is in that Z direction. We then add those together, which gives us our desired vertex position. The way we get those directions, Z is just straight direction from the camera node. We take the cross product with the global up and the cameras forward to get the X, y, X direction, which is left and right. We then take the cross product with the Z and X direction to get the cameras Y. Um, so that's all the directions. Again, we multiply those by position locations and then add them together. Bob's your uncle, as some might say. Um, we get this, as you can see, even though the, the object is clearly not moving, we, we have our uh, x, y, and, x, y, and z directions. Those don't move, but the object does appear to rotate towards the camera, which is great. It's far more performant than doing this in uh, on the processor. And to prove it again, here's X, Y, and Z. Doop, doop, doop. Even though the thing appears to be rotating, it does not rotate on the uh, transform. So it's, it's good. If you're doing a lot of these all at once, you're going to want to do it in your uh, graphics card because your graphics card is already doing basically these same types of things. So you're, you're pretty much not losing any performance. Okay, so now that we've gone over that, there's also a problem with this variation zero, which is that all of the, all of the objects here, they have the same rotation, which is cool for certain things. It's, it's nice and performant, which is good for anything that's 2D. If you just need this to stick to this, the screen of a computer um, then yeah it makes sense the problem is in VR you can actually tell that these are they're basically just pointing to the nearest point on the camera's plane that's the best way I can explain it if you're not dealing with VR you can basically just skip uh, ahead and um, and it won't be a, deal, a problem but if you are doing VR this can be a little bit annoying and disconcerting so what we want instead is this variation one, which I'll go over right now. Okay, so variation one is almost exactly the same thing as the first one, except in order to point directly at the camera, rather than taking the camera's direction, we're just taking the object's position and subtracting that from the camera's position, which should give us a direction uh, from the object to the camera, and we're gonna treat that as the Z direction. Um, it's always end minus start, right? So this might actually be backwards. If it doesn't work out, just uh, flip it. The reason, I, oh yeah, so the reason we're doing that is that the um, the quad that I'm using actually points away from the camera, so we want it to be uh, in, inverted. But other than that, <laughs> We just treat that as alternative camera Z, so Z, X, Y, X, Y, Z. We multiply them by the position data, and that, you know, same deal as variation zero. Okay, so just like variation zero had a problem in VR, which is that it always points at the plane, uh, variation one has a problem in VR, which is that we're, we're always uh, using the camera's position, but in VR you have two cameras. So we get this slight, an effect kind of like this, where they're not totally the same. So uh, your eyes can see the difference 
between these and you're trying to make a, a, a flat plane out of it like this. See, it looks fine having two different shapes uh, in, in 2D, but in VR, you can see this difference and it. it hurts your eyes, especially up close. It's very strange because your eyes try to focus and it just doesn't work. So for that, we have variation two, which I'll go over in just a second. Okay, so billboard variation three um, does not run in editor because, well, it actually kind of does, but it's um, the values need to be driven by code more or less because what we're doing here is we're going to look at an arbitrary position, which we are delivering over here. Um, so we have a renderer which holds our material basically and a transform of a game object, a thing to look at. And we're just saying um, this part, <clears throat> we have to declare a material property block. So some people don't like var. Um, I don't like var, but it's just so much faster. Uh, R is this renderer get property block um, basically you pass in this value and it will put into that value the material property block that it gets back from R um, or from the renderer we then p dot set vector is going to put this value into this variable if it can find something with that name and in this case we have to name not just the name here like we can actually uh, rename this to name and it will actually still work because the reference name is what matters I think let's double check that oh we've actually done it backwards but that's only backwards for the quad because quads point in the uh, negative Z direction. All right, so let's do it again. Ugh, okay, yeah, here we go. So as we move this, the plane is always looking at it. And then what we would want to happen is we just, uh, instead of putting sphere to look at, we would put our camera. Um, which we can actually see over here. Let's just do this. Two thing to look at camera. Um, okay, so it's this one that we're looking at. Let's move the camera and that up a little bit. Okay. So now when we move the camera around, it's always looking at the camera. Well, everything's always looking at the camera. It's kind of hard to see what we're even talking about, but it's this one. Eh, it works. We're looking at this one. Okay, great. So that billboard variation too, as I said, is um, it's pretty cool, but it also has this other use, which is kind of nice, which is that if for some reason you want to rotate a ton of objects towards one other object, as you can see here, we uh, we can do that again. You know, no rotation. Um, well, this is this object. So if we uh, lock this one. You know, this one's rotating without changing the, um, without changing the transform at all. So that's also like a cool use of it. Okay, so now we come to billboard variation three. In this one, we can use whatever we want for the other, you know, the actual shader doesn't matter that much. What we're worried about here is um, flipbook stuff. So I have this little dude, and he's, uh, you know, there's a little flipbook type thing that we can rotate him around. Um, I had to offset it by six just because it was being weird. What we do is we take the object and camera position. Um, 
probably we should use the uh, billboard variation two stuff instead of um, instead of the camera based stuff because I personally would like to use this for VR and I think that'll be better. Um, so this whole section, all the way up to the arc ten over here, is a sto is a um, signed angle function. It's a little bit confusing, but basically we get our camera Z. Um, we take the cross product with that and our objects forward, which gives us a. Uh, okay, so Z and forward should give us this sort of. Um, uh, it gives us the direction orthogonal to the two, which is going to be. Um, ugh. What is it going to be? It's going to be something like up, most likely. And the more like up it is, the higher this dot product is. But we also take the dot product between those two. So basically, we want the angle between them and the angle between them and up, or their shared up and whatever. Then we compare those to basically get the difference uh, on the up axis more or less. So basically we want to know how much around up are they rotated compared to each other, which is <laughs> kind of hard to say. So all that is kind of just a black box. Just look up um, sine distance function or sine angle and you should get something like that if you really want to figure it out. Uh, then degrees to radians to degrees divide by 45 because we have um, we want each angle to be 45 degrees that we can see this little dude on. I had to offset by 6 just because I don't think I made my my um, my little sheet quite right. Here's what it looks like uh, by itself. Oops. Ugh, what's going on? Okay, if we did one and one, I got these, you know, directions. So I think it was two and four. Nope, four and two. Okay, yeah. Uh, then we just pump that into our color over here. So. So what? Why do we care about that? Let me show you what it actually ends up looking like. And hopefully you will be amazed and love me forever and like and comment and subscribe and all that stuff. Okay, so we have this little dude. When we look at him straight on, you can see his big blue eyes and his weird purple lips. And then when we go to the side, uh, you know, we can rotate around him. Isn't that spectacular? As I may have mentioned already, when we rotate them sideways, we get this problem. So unfortunately, we can't rotate him his game object directly, but we can kind of have a child object that we rotate instead, which allows us to, uh, you know, if we wanted to rotate him 90 degrees or negative 90 degrees. There's probably also some fun you could do by making it, uh, if you want fewer flipbooks or whatever, you could probably do some fancy math and uh, flip it back and forth and then just use four of them or something <clears throat> I don't know I think this is as good as we're gonna get right now unfortunately so uh, yeah I hope this was informative it's probably been long as hell if there's anything else I can help you with then please feel free to reach out I haven't made many of these videos but I do enjoy it and I appreciate that you guys uh, engage so, yeah, you don't have to like and subscribe, but comments would be interesting. Have a nice day.